Well, I've been away at SHOT Show, so I was a little bit behind on this, but uh, in the last episode, we got the lock plate all situated and had the bolt drilled and tapped, and that's all good. So the lock plate is completely finished. So in this episode, what we're going to do is inlet all of the lock work pieces and get ourselves to a functioning flint lock. The lock was, was sitting pretty deep in the mortise here, so I just wanted to take down the sides of, uh, of the mortise a bit, and I used a couple of rasps to do that. This is a sure form rasp, which takes off a lot of wood. you got to be careful with it. And uh, then I finished it up with a combination wood rasp here, just to smooth it out a bit. You don't want to go too far, and hopefully I haven't so that we'll still be able to do the finished sanding and not uh, not leave the lock proud of the stock. But um, now we're ready to make the inside right. And since we're using this kit, we already have the cuts partially made. So we're gonna see how good that is and go from there. All right, for the first step in the process, I've reinstalled the bridle and I've coated it with Jarrow's Inletting Black because so many of you tease me about using lipstick. Uh, this is what real builders use, so I just pick some up. <laughs> I still like lipstick. But you just put this on with a paintbrush. It's pretty easy. And we are going to drop this in and see where it goes. And it don't go anywhere. All right, so... We're getting some hits right up here at the top that are going to have to come off. And uh, I'm just going to chisel that off. And then we'll take it from there. Okay, so now, if you can see it, I'm actually hitting right here on the screw head. And you can actually see the slot in there if you're getting enough resolution on the screen. So I'm just going to cut that out gently. And, you know, when you're working on an interior <coughs> surface like this, really handy tools to have are bent chisels like these. And they let you get down into that cut. So I'm just going to get in here, and I'm just going to take that little sliver off and that's it and now I'm going to put the lock back in and I'm just going to keep on doing that until I've got that bridle completely fitted. All right, Up until now I've not really been too impressed with the pre-cut inletting on this stock but I've got to say the bridle uh, about the only thing keeping it from going in was deepening up that screw hole now so I got that deep enough, the, the bridle is seating in, and I screwed the lock back on tight. And now I'm going to see if that's marking anything in the stock that I need to take off. So I'm just going to take the lock out again, and we're going to see if we have any color showing up in the stock. And if we do, we're going to get the chisels out and take that off. Okay, so let's see, moment of truth. Well, we got a little bit. Not much. A little bit. We've got some right there. We still have some on the screw heads. And we've got some right up in here. So we're going to get the chisels out, take that off. And then we're going to be, uh, I think, ready to go on to the next piece. All right, I think this is going to be it for the bridle. Uh, I've been working on this for about an hour. And every time I think I'm there, I just find a little speck of color when I tighten it down. So then I chisel that off and go on. So I'm going to pull a lock off. I just took off one tiny little speck last time around, so I am hoping here on live TV, as they say, that uh, you are going to see this nice and clean. And it is beautiful. All right, so now we're ready to move on to the next peak. Well, the next step is to install the uh, the tumbler, which I've done and covered it with transfer color. And now we're going to put it in and move it around, and wherever the color marks, we're going to take it off just like we did with the tumbler. And that's basically the way we're going to handle the entire rest of the lock. It's not not too exciting. 
and I really don't expect them to take off too much wood because the internal inletting of the lock is probably the most useful inletting on this kit that I've run across so far. Pressed it in and the tumbler left no color on at all, nothing, no wood to take off. So now I've, uh, I've screwed the lock plate in tight and I'm going to rotate the tumbler. All right, which certainly it would be doing. So I'm going to go as much as I can. And we're just going to see what that's marking. I think I feel a little bit of resistance, but not much. I don't think we're going to have to take much off. Well, we just got the tiniest bit of transfer color right there. All right, that, that's it. So I'm just going to take a chisel and get that out and try it again. I think we'll be moving on to the sear spring and the sear in very short order. Okay, one thing I should point out is when you uh, install the tumbler for fitting, take the fly out of the tumbler and uh, put that somewhere safe because it's very easy to lose. What I do is I just tape it right to the wall of the bag that I'm storing the lock parts in and that's where it's going to stay until the final assembly of the lock when the gun's in fireable condition. Uh, putting it in before then is just a waste of time and just uh, adds to the chance that you're going to lose that very small part and you'll be sorry. Well the sear spring is the next part that's got to go on and that is right here. Get, uh, get that in. Okay, now you can see I've put color on and color is missing at the top of that screw and it's perfectly reproduced here. So it looks like on this this uh, part we're going to have a little bit of work to do to actually get it in. Uh, I, used, uh, I used some gouges to inlet that screw head and now I'm able to see pretty clearly where the spring itself is marking the wood. We can see the mark from each leaf and that gives me a good area. I'm just going to take that entire space out. Well, we've got the sear spring all inletted right in here. I don't know how well it's going to show up, but that cut is in. So the last thing to do on the back end of the lock is the sear itself. All right, well, as I think you can see, the leg of the sear right here is too, uh, is too long for the mortise. I mean, it is hitting hard. And let me get into the sear mortise here. And you can see it has marked very strongly right, right there. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to drill I'm going to have to drill that hole. Right, I had to drill pretty deeply to get that uh, sear in. I had to move a significant amount of wood. What I want to see right now is whether or not it moves freely. And it does seem to be. Push it down. So I've got, uh, got it screwed in. I've got the lock screwed in. And I'm going to see if there's any residual color still to take off. And hopefully I'm pretty close. Well, we're progressing pretty well. The back end lock works are all inletted now. So I've replaced the main spring and I've also put the cock on just with a light press fit. And the reason for that is because I'm going to need now to work the action. And I really can't do that with just a pair of pliers very easily. So I don't want the cock all the way all the way on because I'm just going to pull it off again in a little while uh, take this apart clean everything up and I got to polish the plate so anyway now we got to do the spring uh, I've been using this quarter inch bent chisel and exacto knife and I'm pretty much I think done inletting the mainspring it's close now well, We'll have to see, but as you can see, I had to I had to cut all the way out here to accommodate the top of the spring, and I think we're getting close in that area. So let's drop it in, and we'll see. I don't want to pull it out all the time to put the. Uh, the screws back in. So right now 
I'm just tapping it. Pretty soon, I'll have to screw it in and put the hammer on and see if it'll cock. And let's see what we got. All right. Okay, we're pretty good. I'll unscrew this because I don't think I can get the proper angle in there. All right, so now I've got it down so that I've got the spring actually impressing against the bottom. I've, I've cleared all of this area, I've cleared that area, and I'm getting all the way down, so I've just got to relieve that, and it's, it's pretty close. Okay, I've turned uh, the stock around because it's easier. I've got to really cut this way now, and it's easier to do that if I'm coming in from this side. All right, so I've got, I've got to remove this area right here. And what I want to do is kind of level this off a little bit. So I'm going to I'm going to outline it and then I'm going to stab it. And then I'm going to cut it in. Now the thing that the thing that I'm concerned about is I'm getting close to the ramrod channel right here. And I don't want to break through into it if I can help it. So I got to clean up this area right here. I was working with some gouges coming down off of the top. So, I'm going to trace it. Take my little four millimeter chisel and I'm just going to go around this area here. So I want to try to level this off and get that color off. So I'm actually doing a little more than just taking that color off. I can see I've got a slope that I've got to deal with up through here. And I get some unevenness in my cuts down here, so I'm going to try to take care of that. <coughs> Excuse me. later. Okay, I'm going to go with a wider bent chisel and just uh, start taking this off. One thing you're gonna have, a lot of chisels. I find these bent chisels to be about the best thing going to get into these mortises. I mean, I really, some people probably can, but I cannot do this with a straight chisel. All right. 
see how we're doing now. Touch this with a little more inletting black on the areas that have already been rubbed off. Had to stop right in the middle of that. That was our vet. My Basset Hound Beauregard is getting a tumor removed today. Or just got a tumor removed and looks like he is coming around so hopefully he'll be okay. Anyway, so we got this back in and I'm just going to give it a little tap around. And see how we're doing. I think we're pretty close. Yep, pretty close. Not all the way there, but pretty close. So we've got color here. A little color right there, a little color right there, and a little rub right there on the top. And a little rub right there. And that's it. Well, we're doing pretty good. I'm going to clean that up, and then I think we're going to have the lock. Well, I've got the cock on loosely now and the lock is in here, it's all screwed on. And what I want to see is how well it functions if everything moves freely, and uh, then see what gets marked by, by color inside after I do that. So I'm just going to pull it back. Okay, I can see I've got no half cock, but I've got full cock. So no half cock means that the that sear bar in there can't drop far enough down to accommodate the half cock notch come back in. So I'm going to have to take a look at that. Uh, that's that's an easy fix. I mean some wood's going to have to come off under the sear. And it sounded like the spring might have been hitting a little bit of wood uh, as it was compressing. So we'll see about that. But now I'm going to trip that trigger. By pressing the sear, trip that trigger, drop the hammer, and I'll be able to take this apart and see what's marked and get it cleaned up. But we're pretty close to being able to put a lock together on here. We've got a pretty extensive area to clean up. You can see all the black in here. And uh, I'm just going to have to bring that down a little bit. I mean, it, it's a fairly wide area, but it's not really a problem area or the lock wouldn't have been moving as freely as it is. So essentially I just got to take a little bit of wood off, uh, just get that color off of there and I, I think we're going to be in business. We've got uh, our reassembled lock back in the stock and we're, uh, we're pretty much good to go on it now. So let's just see. We got half cock frizzing down, full cock. That's locking in pretty good but I'm not hearing it click. I might want to go in and take a little more wood off in there. And the sear is right here where I'm pushing the screwdriver. And there we go. So we're well on our way to having a fireable gun now.